Hamilton College is a prestigious liberal arts college in upstate New York, USA, and Watson's has, a, has had a connection uh, with Hamilton since the early 1950s. Every year, Watson's chooses one pupil to be the Hamilton Scholar. Uh, this pupil spends their a year at Hamilton studying a wide variety of subjects and taking part in all the other, other activities that Hamilton has to offer, uh, social, cultural, sporting. The scholarship lasts a year and then the Watson's pupil returns, sometimes reluctantly, to the UK for university. At the same time, Hamilton chooses one of its newly graduated students to come to Watson's as a teaching fellow helping out in their subject area, as well as learning support, American studies, classes, primary classes, and all the school trips, including, of course, projects. So, today is the 1st of June, 2018, and uh, we're delighted to welcome to Watson's um, to have a conversation about their experiences. Two former Hamilton scholars, uh, Michael Smith and Peter Shannon, who were there 59 and 60 years ago, is that right? Yes. Um, as well as this year's Hamilton Fellow, uh, Caitlin or Kate Puglia. And uh, uh, they're going to talk about their experiences. So, over to you. Um, so what interested you both in first applying to the Hamilton Scholarship? Well, I, I think I had always um, an interest in America. Um, family, we had quite a lot of relatives out in America and Canada and um, I think the idea of spending some time away uh, from uh, the domestic, you know, a bit living at home and being, you know, we lived just very near the school so, you know, Watson's was, was uh, dominant in, our, in my life. Uh, and the opportunity to, you know, to sample something quite different. Now, similar in my case, I think, except I, I didn't feel so close to Watson. I didn't live on the doorstep as you rather mm -hmm. did, Michael. I mean, I had to get a bus to get here. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, just the whole idea, America to me was you know, the, the open spaces, the, the big sky, all that kind of stuff. As well as wanting to have, I think, a, a year out in some sense. The same feeling as, as Mike, really. Because by the time you end your, your high school experience, you've been examined to death almost, tested to destruction. <laughs> and uh, if you then go straight into university life, Sure. You know, that's another four years of testing to destruction. If they, yeah. if they don't get you the first time, they certainly get you the second. <laughs> so to, to have a break, and of course it wasn't a complete academic break, uh -huh. because I'd already um, applied for university uh -huh. before I went and been accepted, but they deferred it for a year. But they did say, you know, you better keep up with your studies while you're away or you're going to find it's a hard road to hold when you come back. So. Uh, the studying at Hamilton was interesting and more varied than it was when I came back here, to be mm -hmm. honest. I mean, it's a wider liberal arts kind mm -hmm. of education, yeah. whereas Edinburgh University studying maths was yeah. a fairly narrow uh, specialisation. So everything about it was good in that yeah. section. Yeah. 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 Was it hard to, to go over to the United States so young just after finishing? <laughs> <laughs> Senior school? I, 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 60 years on, <laughs> it's quite difficult <laughs> in some ways. But I, I'm sure it was actually. You know, I, you know, I just wondered what on earth almost like you know, I'd let myself in for. <laughs> you know, and I remember my mother took me down uh, by train to uh, get on the, the boat at uh, Southampton, you know, uh, to, to, go, to go across to New York. and. Uh, just uh, feeling, you know, going uh, going into a total new world almost, really, and uh, yeah. uh, exciting in many ways. Mm -hmm. It was obviously going to be an adventure, I think, but uh, you know, and a lot of nervousness as well as to you know what what I, I might be coming up against, so to speak. <laughs> well, in a funny kind of way, maybe I was just a naive youngster, but I was just all excitement about going. Mm -hmm. 
some of some of our pals were a bit apprehensive, saying, "But you don't know anybody in America." <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing, which was true. Yeah. Uh, unlike my kind, I had no relatives across there at all, mm -hmm. or I, I didn't know anybody American. Well, I knew I knew one person, but that was just indirectly. Uh, but I just couldn't wait to get. It was just pure adrenaline, you know. I just wanted to get going. Mm -hmm. And I remember, likewise, it was my uncle who took me down to Southampton and struck me on the boat. <laughs> and uh, I just couldn't wait to get, get going. Yeah, yeah. It was great. And you talk of the boat, oh, yeah. so you crossed by <laughs> liner. And yes, yeah. we, we discussed this the other day. <laughs> what was in, that? in those days, all, all we had, I don't know what the arrangement now is, but uh, certainly at that time, the only thing that our parents had to pay was our travel, travel yeah. across and back. Yes. And when we checked out the, the prices, the, uh, despite the fact that the, the boat took five days, mm -hmm. uh, the, the boat trip was significantly cheaper than the, 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 the airfare. So that's, that's why we went. I can day. tell you what it cost. It cost oh. £70 one way. Yeah. For five days. Yeah. <laughs> it was part of the time on board. Because <laughs> the, the boats, when we went over, well, certainly in my case, end of August, beginning of September, yes. the boat was full of full of students, students going yes. off. For the ones I remember were sort of Fulbright, do Fulbright scholarships yeah. still exist? Yes. Well, yeah. I remember coming across people who were taking up a Fulbright scholarship in various <laughs> places right in the US. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fulbright's really popular. So the boat was, well, I mean, there would be normal passengers as well, I imagine, <laughs> but it, it just seemed to be almost like a, 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 a student boat yes. heading across to America. It was mm -hmm. an amazing experience, that part of it too. I mean, it was, you know, you sort of... Yes. You, you, got, you broke away from home and you were used to being on your own by the time you got there. Yes. That's the feeling I had. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I shared um, a cabin with three others and they were all postgraduates, I think, the three mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. The most extraordinary co uh, coincidence happened the following summer when I was travelling in the United States and I got on a bus in Chicago, a Greyhound bus, to travel to uh, somewhere in Toronto. I think. And I sat down in the seat and turned to the chap on the inside, and it was one of these three people oh. who had shared the cabin <laughs> on the way across. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quite yeah. extraordinary. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's sort of uh, rather by the way. Yeah. But uh, uh, yes. But... No, the, the other good thing about arriving there was that the boat I was on arrived in the uh, towards sunset, sailing into New York, yeah. oh. and the, you know. This is just absolutely the New World Symphony in lights. Yeah. Mm. Just amazing. Yeah. The, just to arrive that way. I mean, I can't imagine arriving by plane at JFK. It's all that exciting, really. But to sail, but to sail up the, the, the Hudson, the Hudson, Hudson. And, and arrive at Pier 40, whatever it was, yeah. the, uh, right in the centre of the city, yeah. with the sun going down behind the sky, you know, it's just ridiculous. And the, the, the big payoff was when we started at, at the college, we had to do uh, a course of public speaking. I mean, is that still the...? It's, so it hasn't been, oh, um, yeah. it hasn't been a requirement, but they're, they're trying to reinstall it oh. for the next few years. Well, um, I, I'd never been one of life's great public speakers at school. I mean, I just, yeah. it just wasn't me at all. I wasn't in the debating society, I wasn't in any of these dramatic productions or any of those things. I wasn't really used to standing up in my own lives. And in retrospect, of course, it was almost the best course mm -hmm. there for me. Uh, anyway, uh, when I went to that first class, I wasn't really looking forward to it. And then we, we were given that our assignment was to just get up and for five minutes explain how you'd come to Hamilton. Mm. And I could just about all the and say, well, I, I can out you just about anybody on this one. And, and that's, that's how it was. It was, mm. it was a great, it was a great arrival. I don't know, what, what sort of, can you still remember what time of day you were at? I mean, I can, I I, I've almost got a, 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 a cinematic recollection of days and weeks mm. of this year. It's I think extraordinary. I arrived in the, the late morning. The late morning? Ah, that's a shame. Yeah, that's a shame. <laughs> and, and your first experiences of Hamilton? Uh, Itself, yes. the college itself? Yes. Um, well, you arrive on the hill, as they say. Mm -hmm. that, uh, <laughs> and because uh, we, we, we got, I got the train up from, from New York City mm -hmm. up to Utica mm -hmm. and then found someone on Utica at the station who was also going to Hamilton. So we got a taxi and, 
and uh, sort of eagerly looked out to see where we were going and uh, coming up onto the hill uh, <laughs> and arriving on the, the campus. Mm -hmm. um, can't go much further than that. Well, I must have been lucky because uh, somebody came to meet me. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a chap called Dave Mead, who was in the, the sort of corresponding development office uh -huh. for the. He wasn't a he wasn't a lecturer or a member of staff in that mm -hmm. sense, but he worked for the college mm -hmm. administration, mm -hmm. and he and another, well, the dad of one of the students I was going to be sharing a room with. He, he was there for some reason. I think he had a connection with the college himself. So they met me in a huge American car <laughs> uh, at, at Utica and drove me back and sure. up, up onto the hill and then suddenly you're just, there you are. Uh -huh. And you, you sort of signed in and were told where you were going to stay. And it just kind of took care of us up from there. Because I was rooming with three more students who belonged to the, the, the fraternity I was going to be associated yeah. with. So in a sense, they kind of took you under their wing. Yeah. And as long as you got on fine with them, life was straightforward. And they just made sure that we found our way around the, the, the campus. Because it wasn't a huge campus, and mm -hmm. you could find your way around yeah. the map of it. I think they called the first week a sort of week of orientation, didn't they? Could be. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, um, and of course, in those days, these um, fraternity houses mm -hmm. were uh, they were, were very active, mm. and uh, I think it was during that sort of early time that mm -hmm. they did the, uh, uh, the freshers' week when the fraternity houses invited these freshers out socially yeah. to get to know them and decide whether they were appropriate yeah. to uh, uh, to go for in terms yeah. of getting them to join the fraternities. Mm -hmm. So it. It was it was really quite a a hectic sort of introduction in that sense. You met a tremendous number of people, and in many ways, you know, um, not completely was, dissimilar to what happens in Freshers' Week in the university here now. I don't think. Yeah, I think perhaps so. Yes, I think there's quite a lot of that still at mm -hmm. Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. um, but you settled into your fraternity dorms quickly. Eh? Well, we didn't actually stay with the fraternity. No. We, the, in those days, uh, we were very fortunate in that uh, both Peter and I, I think, um, were, were invited to um, join a particular uh, fraternity, but it didn't mean staying there. They did have people resident, but we stayed in a freshers' dormitory. And we took all our meals at the fraternity house, which was the big plus. Yeah. I mean, they were extremely generous. Oh, that's right. We, they were essentially providing board and yes. yeah, free board. Mm -hmm. in that, sense. that doesn't happen anymore, Kate, does it? No, no. Um, we all are required to eat in the dining halls. Right. A few of the dorms even really have kitchens um, that are used. I mean, I, I'm interested to know. I was in Carnegie. Uh -huh. Does it still exist? It does still exist, yeah. <laughs> as a dormitory? It does as a dormitory, so it's oh. not um, a fraternity house. No. We don't have any fraternity houses. Well, no, the, well that. Mike says we were not members of the fraternity, we just dined there. But that, that was where That's my where dog was. Yes. R room 204 Carnegie. Oh, wow. <laughs> and know. it was a quad. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. So most of Carnegie is still for four, four mm -hmm. people. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yes. I think my experience was too. Um, I spent the first semester uh, in South. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. was yeah. then replaced. It was, they were going to carry out, I think, uh, uh, major building works there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they they were building a new dormitory called Dunham. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, we <moved> halfway, <laughs> and we moved halfway through, oh. so you know, it was quite a so that you were only sixty years old. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> new is a relative yeah. term. Yes. yes, yes. And your classes then? Did you get them fixed up very quickly? Yes, well, my recollection is sometime again during this introductory week, I was assigned to go and see um, a director of studies, rather than you would have, I'm not sure if that's what he was called. Um, uh, what's his name? Sidney Bennett. Sidney Wortman? No, Sidney Bennett. Bennett. Right. He was part of the administration at the Anyway, 
uh, I went in to see him and he asked me what, you know, what, what I was studying. So I told him maths and physics was the degree I just signed up to go back to in Edinburgh when I got home. So he says, well, you better do some maths and physics then. So I got two maths courses and a physics course. He explained that the, the standard issue was six courses. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's still the same. It's or not, not, no. Right. Anyway, that's what it was like then. And uh, so six courses, so that was my three serious ones, if you like. Mm -hmm. And then, without any sort of real arm twisting, he, sa he said, I should study some American history yeah. mm. and some American government. Mm. Uh, both of which I'm glad I did because I'd never been much for history at school. Uh, I, you yeah. know, I stopped doing history at the end of the second year uh, and didn't really have a great interest in it at that point. But started, what was nice was American history started <laughs> at a nice late stage, 1620, basically, <laughs> the course <laughs> kicked off. And I could cope with 1620 yeah. up to you know, <laughs> 1960 reasonably well. I could take it all in. Yes. And then American government, I'm, I'm forever grateful that I learned a bit about that. Because now, you know, whenever an American election comes round, mm -hmm. uh, people still ask me. Mm -hmm. like, I could put a textbook out there. <laughs> yeah. what, about, what about you, Mike? Uh, and of course, public speaking, that was the success. Oh, yes, yes. I, well, like Peter, I... I felt I had to do Latin and Greek, which was the subjects I was going to do at Edinburgh University. So uh, I really had to keep my hand in there. Okay. Uh, it wasn't easy because the, 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 there wasn't a great deal of demand for either subject. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the teacher, Professor Mattingly, um, was, uh, he was quite near retirement. And he, but he had, um, he used to have me just as, as a one-to-one -one yes. mm -hmm. class. And it used to, sometimes it was uh, on a Sunday evening or a Monday oh. evening, you know, it, was, it wasn't even during normal, during yeah. normal times. Yeah. Uh, and like Peter, I, I did American history, which I enjoyed yeah. Yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. very good, very good teacher, Dean yeah. Dallas. Yeah. And um, I did logic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I did anthropology, yeah. which with Earl Count, who was a, quite, a, quite an authority mm -hmm. on anthropology. Yeah. Very interesting subject to get into. And I did, I did a course in music as well. Oh, yeah. So, uh, in a fairly, uh, I think that uh, covers, covers yeah. it. Did you not have to do your public speaking? I don't think I did. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's uh, interesting. I was, I was, yeah. Funneled into it before I could yeah. yes. stop it. But it's the same at Hamilton now, Kate, isn't it? That people do a wide variety of courses. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Hamilton kind of prides itself on being one of the few colleges that has an open curriculum. So um, we don't have any requirements really of what courses to take. The only thing we're required to do is take three writing intensive mm. courses over the four years that you're there. But yeah. those can be in yeah. any discipline. So you can All take right. them in, in math and psychology, really anything. Um, but besides that, you could take anything that interests you. Right. So I don't know if then were there distribution requirements? Did students have to take, you know, one math, one English, one I English? Think, I think the people I knew had to follow a certain pattern. Mm -hmm. yes. And if they wanted to major in, let's say, psychology, then in their second, third, and fourth yes. year, so it had to be a, a stream in that direction. Yeah, that we still have, yeah. Once yeah. you choose so your major. I would major. imagine. I yeah. would imagine so. But we as, you know, as foreign students, you might say. Yeah. Um, we had the liberty to choose what yeah. we wanted. We didn't have to, to do anything apart from, I think, as, yeah. as we both said, that uh, we had to keep our hand in on mm. subjects that we were going to carry on studying. Mm. And at home. But the interesting thing to me, which has always stuck with me, was that <clears throat> the things like history and government and so on, I just went into a freshman course, mm -hmm. you know, level yeah. one or whatever. Mm -hmm. But when, the, the, when um, the director of studies heard what I'd done in maths and physics, I was oh, stuck yeah. into a third year class, yeah. mm. which surprised me. I mean, I'd always thought that American education was, you know, top of the top pops, really. Mm -hmm. But at that stage, the fact that I'd come out of high school having done two years of calculus, for instance, yeah. as soon as he heard that, he said, well, that's you into the third year class. <laughs> yeah. because the vast majority of uh, under, uh, students coming into the college would not have done 
calculus, for instance, before they got there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this, well, it sort of buttoned me up, I made me feel quite good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, though I found the courses quite, quite testing. Mm -hmm. because, and, but again, like Mike, my classes were never as small as his, but I remember the physics class was only four or five. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a huge uptake of physics. And the maths, bigger, but not, I don't think I was ever in a class in maths for more than about 15. Yeah, I think that's still true today, yeah. largely. I mean, the, the big classes were the history and, uh, and the government. They, 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 were, they were good sized classes, yes. Yeah. I wouldn't like to say how history and not hard to tell sometimes because we start at 8 o'clock in the morning. That was a shock to the system. Particularly in the deepest winter. <laughs> you, you spoke earlier about the winter, both of you, oh, and, the, yes. and this terrible Hamilton winter. <laughs> you, you've been through this four times in the last four years. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't think of it as a terrible winter at all. No. I, oh, the, my words, sorry, I yeah, take them back. <laughs> still, it, it was a huge shock and a huge change, but I actually thought it was a very healthy climate. Mm. Yeah. There was a shock of suddenly waking up and finding three or four feet of snow oh, yes. and knowing, being told, that's going to be there for the next four or five months. <laughs> but one, you know, there, there were beautiful days mm. during the winter. Yeah. It was just, you had to. To, to find your way around campus through these great mounds of snow yeah, yeah. as created through. Yeah. But it very much dictated, the winter very much dictated the sports. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was going to ask you about the sports. And, uh, yeah. I think, if I'm right, I played soccer uh, mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. Likewise. Yeah. And uh, I think the season finished uh, at the end of November. Was there homecoming or something about this? Was homecoming? There was some, do you still have a homecoming weekend? We do, weekend? yeah. When, yeah. When did that fall? Yes, it's in the fall. Um, right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But, uh, end of the fall. I think that was the end of the soccer season. Yes, yes that's right. So I think yeah. it was the end of November. Yeah. And then, then the, the sort of winter sports, the mm -hmm. ice hockey, mm -hmm. indoor, you know, baseball, uh, basketball, yeah, and swim, uh, took swim, over swim, and yeah. ran till the end of March, I yeah. think. Yeah. And then the last two months were the, um, were the, uh, the spring or summer. Yeah, baseball, baseball, mm -hmm. tennis, golf, golf, tennis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, the American football season was much the same as the soccer American season. American football, I suppose, at the beginning. Yes, but there was a lot of sporting activity available uh, that you both got involved in. Oh yeah, yes. yeah, 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 a lot, yes. a lot. Yes, yes, yes. 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 It, was, it was quite fun. Uh, they, they have. I don't know whether they still got a golf course, but yeah, yeah. Um, okay. You know, I played. I played quite a lot of golf. I discovered when I read my uh, uh, the letters I'd wrote, written home, you know, yeah. saying mm -hmm. I'm playing golf here. And, <laughs> and uh, in fact, um, the year I was there, there was. Um, I, I think he was a. I think he was in his third year. Ward Wetloffer was a golfer. And he played that year for the U.S. Walker Cup team. Right. And do you know where they played the Walker Cup that year? Muirfield. Oh, <laughs> which is just just outside yeah. Edinburgh. Which is yeah. just yeah. Edinburgh. Yeah. <laughs> and do you know who else was in that team? Jack Nicklaus. Jack Nicklaus. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so it's quite a good but, team. I mean, I I, I got to know Ward Wedlock for quite well, and mm -hmm. uh, played played the odd game, the game yes, of golf with him. <laughs> I think I, I discovered I played golf uh, Hamilton uh, for the fraternity. The fraternity. Oh, really? It was mm -hmm. yes. Intramural. And we won the, the intramural. There you go. <laughs> yeah. No, so, sport, sport was quite a big. It was a big, thing. big mm -hmm. thing. Well, you know, there were, certainly in Kai Sai, they, they yes. were sort of sporty house. This yeah. intramural thing. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. they had yeah. it in swimming and oh, what, everything, uh, everything you know, golf and mm -hmm. whatnot. So. Unfortunately, they included academic prowess as well. They actually pulled <laughs> Kai Sai back down the hill. Oh, I see that, that, that low it is. <laughs> yeah. uh, too many jocks and not enough brains. <laughs> and did you come home at Christmas? Uh, well, that no, it, never, it would have been. No. So, what did you do? Were you, did you have I was fortunate invited my, by friends? My or father's what brother, happened? my uncle. Oh, uh, yes, lived yes. up in Montreal. Yes. So, I yeah. found my way up to Montreal. Yeah. Spent Christmas and New Year oh, with my yeah. uncle and aunt. Right. And you, you I, I, well, I had no relatives there to yes, fall back on. In a sense, I was maybe luckier because Dave Fraser, who I think yes. I knew, uh, he, I, I didn't know him. I mean, I mean another, it, 
eternal memory of America is just how hospitable oh, yes, all yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. Absolutely. I mean, we arrived completely unknown and we're just taken under the wing and away we went. Yeah. Now, perhaps our reaction was good, but you know, they, they would have done it whether our reaction was good yeah. or not, I suspect. Yes. Yes. And then in the midst of it, you were almost spoiled for choice mm -hmm. if there was a, a weekend or a special mm -hmm. event or any of that kind. So at Christmas time, um, David Fraser, who was the member of Guide yeah. Zion, yeah. Uh, uh, Mike knows him as well, he invited me to, to stay with his family up in Syracuse, which oh, is about 40 yes. miles away. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then, Buck Malloy. Oh gosh. Splendid <laughs> 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 name. I mean, it's just kidding. like you would imagine him to be, I can assure you. He drove these old banger cars. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we went out to Chicago mm -hmm. with him and stayed with his family out there. And then I'll never forget the journey back because his car more or less blew up in Buffalo and we finished up getting the train from Buffalo back to the college. I'd just got back in time. There was a sort of deadline you had to meet. But I mean, all this was great. Yes. I don't know about you, but I didn't feel I had to organise very much at all. Everything just seemed to be laid on. Absolutely. I, I, yeah. I, I can't say enough for the, no, no, it was the, fantastic. the sheer uh, friendliness, oh, hospitality. I mean, down to the fact that if I said I was going to visit a, a family friend in Boston, as I did for Thanksgiving, someone came forward and said they'd give me a run there, mm, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. take me yeah, there in yeah. a car. Yeah. Yeah. And this happened with, 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 with other situations too, mm -hmm. where, you know, there was always someone saying they would do, you know, make sure I got where I was going. But yeah. that, that also quite, and Buck Malloy, I mean, we, when I was travelling across the continent, yeah. you know, I ended up in Chicago and, there was. and met up with Buck and Stu Scott yeah, and yeah, there yeah. someone else. There, was another, yeah. there were three of them. Right. And we had a great time. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but, but they're just so friendly. Yeah, but the, but the other feature which just comes into my head as you're talking there, the kind of uh, what they consider to be local or no distance really to travel, mm -hmm. is so different over there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the first weekend I was there, somebody said there's, there's going to be some kind of house party down in um, wherever it was, Union or something, Union College or something. Oh, sure. yeah. so, that sort of distance, now, I sort of had a vague notion of how far it was. But uh, there were no motorways in, in Britain at that mm -hmm. time, but the, the, the New York State Thruway, yes. as they called it, was a toll road and you could travel you know, 150 miles, very quickly, mm -hmm. in a way that you just couldn't countenance in this country at all. Yeah. So uh, I was more or less the first weekend I was there, why don't you come down and we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll go down there. I can't remember exactly where we stayed or anything else at all, but it all seemed to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. And then came back again, but that was this part of 100 miles each way down to Albany, yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. it's not close. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and again, uh, the, the guy Tom Aitken, yes. he was applying to go t to a college up in New Hampshire somewhere mm -hmm. and he had to go and have an interview in, in the autumn. He said, would you like to come? Because autumn in, uh, in Vermont mm -hmm. and uh, New Hampshire is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, I, ju I just went with them up there and, it, you know, it was fantastic <laughs> just to see. And, but, but again, all by invitation, you just had to be there and somebody would say, right, you come, we're going somewhere, why don't you come? Yeah. And, and your road trips at the end of the, oh, yeah, yeah. the academic year, yeah. what, what did you do? Well, um, I teamed up with, uh, there were other foreign students there. There was a Dutch boy and there was a French boy. Charles, Charlie Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. <laughs> and, and there was a chap from West Africa, yeah. Gil Olympio, his father was the Prime Minister <laughs> of <laughs> Togo, Togo. Togo. Yeah, oh yes. and the, the four of us plus uh, a chap we, we happened to, we got talking with them, it turned out uh, he lived in New York. His father had a, a, a car dealership and he wanted a car taken out to their other son who lived in California. 
<laughs> so guess what? <laughs> five of us managed to get into this car and we drove, we rode 5,000 miles from the east coast right across. We kept to the north yes. because we had Girl Olympia, we didn't want to run into any of the uh, oh. possible problems in yeah. the south. Yeah. But we never, we, didn't, we never had any problems. And we went across through Chicago and kept to the north, the Dakotas, mm -hmm. and <sighs> hit um, the west coast at Seattle. And then we drove down the west coast to San Francisco, where we split up. Yeah. And I was going off to stay with a, a cousin of my mother's just south of San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. So after that, I was on my own, but I was fortunate enough to have other relatives down in Los Angeles and then headed back east and courtesy of Greyhound buses which <laughs> a remarkable, really quite remarkable way of transport. Um, I sort of hopped across America backwards and uh, Again, I had offers of, you know, come and see us when you're traveling. So I had someone from Hamilton who was, whose home was in just outside Phoenix. <laughs> and then I had someone from the fraternity uh, in Denver. And then these guys in Chicago. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then in Montreal, I went to visit my uncle. Back down to Boston, and then down to New York. Visited Washington. Yeah. Comprehensive. Oh, <laughs> yes. I didn't go down to the south. But no. there we are. Well, yeah. <laughs> very, very similar, actually. I mean, I didn't know that was your kind of route. But uh, this chap I got friendly with, a member of the fraternity, he was driving out to California in a VW Beetle uh, because he had an uncle who, I think, ran or owned a fruit farm out in California and he was going out there to, to work but we had a month to get there so similar to Mike's route we went out to Chicago visiting Buck and others <laughs> and then we, we went out to um, uh, the mountain with the, the, the presidents on the, on the Mount, Mount, Mount Rushmore Mount we went out to there <laughs> Down to Yellowstone, down to um, Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. down to the Grand Canyon, Zion, all, all these. And to me, that's that's the, the part of America that sticks in, in your mind. I mean, mm -hmm. some, some of the big cities are spectacular, but they're, they're, they don't have quite have the wow factor mm -hmm. that these, these um, national parks have. I mean, they are just extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And then we got down to, we arrived in... Los Angeles right at the beginning of July and this fruit farm was just northwest, a place called Santa Paula, which most people have never heard of. But interestingly, some of these forest fires that were happening the last summer mm. were threatening mm. Santa Paula. It's not far from Santa Barbara, which was yeah. on the fringe of the mm. of the firestorms that were around. So again it's just interesting to, to visualize all these places that were at. Mm -hmm. So I was I was working in, in you know the fruit Fields, which was a new experience. At Watson's, the closest you got to that was going picking potatoes and <laughs> the tatty <laughs> holidays. The tatty <laughs> out in the October. Yeah. <laughs> this was real stuff. Uh, you know, there was irrigation in the fields, which I'd never seen before. Yeah. I'd seen pictures of it, but this was genuine irrigation. Um, a, lot, a lot of the people who worked in the fields were, were Mexicans mm. who'd come across. They were referred to rather disparagingly as the wetbacks. Suggesting they'd oh, swum across yeah. the, the Rio Grande, mm -hmm. but they they did a lot of the work and they were very kind. I remember, and they, they got on well. There were the other American farm workers there, but there was no no aggro about it mm -hmm. at all. It was uh, it was all very friendly, and mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it. And of course, the weather was just extraordinary. Mm -hmm. I was there for a month, and every day you could set your clock by the fact that it would start off a bit misty in the morning. The mist would rise at about quarter to ten, and you would just have an endless blue sky for the rest of the day. We mm -hmm. just had a month of that. And because I was a guest, I actually played some golf out there as well, because golf, again, the Scotsman's lot. Yeah. Uh, but there, it was so hot, it was over 100 degrees when we, we played this course, 
and uh, you know there was a water fountain on every golf tee, and the, the standard procedure was play nine holes and then stop and take some liquid on board of various kinds, and then maybe play the other nine holes after that. But it was all, and then eventually, when that was all over. Uh, Ross and I went up to San Francisco because he had some business there, and then Greyhound bus whoosh, right across to Washington. And then at the end of the year, you came back by boat as well, presumably, yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. 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 How did you feel when you saw America disappear in the horizon? What, what were your feelings there? Well, in some ways, I think uh, I was quite looking forward to getting back home, but I, I think, uh, you know, when I you know, sat down and thought about it. It was a marvellous experience. Oh. I mean, mm. it really was. I mean, to try and sort of sum it up, you know, things that helped you to sort of feel, in a way, more independent. Yeah. Uh, you felt sort of more capable of organising things. Uh, you were aware so of so much more of the, the world, so to speak, we live in. <laughs> And just how, as we've emphasised, just how friendly, uh, helpful, oh. and hugely hospitable oh, we were there. Yeah. So you know, it was, it was a hugely positive feeling mm -hmm. we came back with. Yeah, I, I didn't sort of have any regrets or tears and you know farewells to America kind of thing. I always assumed I'd, I'd go back sometime. No, I never have. What? <laughs> have you not? No. no. In a strange kind of way, I'm not oh. sure if I'm, I'm wondering if I would spoil the illusion yes. and uh, burst the bubble or well, anything of that. Don't say illusion. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know what I mean? Yes. It, it might yes. spoil it. Yes. It's no, such a perfect I memory. Of course. That yes. it, 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 uh -huh. um, and it, I was still, you know, flying with adrenaline coming home. It had been such a great yes. time. Uh, and, uh, but in a, in a sense, I'd always known it was going to end after a year, mm -hmm. so you were already half thinking of yeah. mm -hmm. settling back in. Yeah. Yes. But again, the, the, the other thing that may or may not be on your list, I don't know, I, but I don't think we can have this conversation without mentioning Dr. Arthur Hunter. I was just going to say that. Yes, yeah. yes, so exactly. Please, please go on. Well, just for anybody who didn't know, Dr. Arthur mm -hmm. Hunter was the the moving force yes. behind the establishment of the, the scholarship. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure on what basis he started it off, but he, he was the kingpin of the New York Life Insurance Company. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, <coughs> one of the lead actuaries in America. He advised the government. I mean, he was an absolute top man. He, mm -hmm. he, he came from the school here, yeah. mm -hmm. made his money, uh, and decided that this was one way he would like to be remembered and pay tribute to the the education he got here, however you like to put it. We, yes. Now we, we both met him. Did you? Okay. Oh, you did. Oh yes. yes. He stayed. With he, was, he was ninety ish oh. by this stage. Yes. And you know one of, one of the important aspects of being out there was to make sure that you went to visit him. Because you know he, he was still lively. He was still he was a Scotsman still playing nine holes of golf in his nineties <laughs> at his local club. Uh, he he was widowed by then. He just stayed in his big house uh, across the river in New Jersey, Mont Montclair, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, he he was keen to 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 meet his students, his Hamilton students, and he was. Hugely hospitable. He, he was a fairly quiet. I mean, of course, he's, he's 90 by this yeah. stage, but he was still very much 100% up here. Okay. And he, you know, he was a good host. And uh, I visited twice. Mm. Uh, but and Mike's got an interesting input here that I'm sure. Yes, he's yes, you've taken a letter from your file there, Michael. Yeah. So. Yes, because um, it so happened that it was just after I arrived at Hamilton that Hamilton College conferred an LLD degree on yes. mm -hmm. Dr. Arthur Hunter right. uh, on the 18th of September, 1958. And if I, if you, can I read it out? Oh, please do, yeah. Because it captures everything, I think. Hamilton honours you today as a man of imagination and vision 
whose singular abilities and international reputation have already earned for you the French Legion of Honour, Britain's King George VI Medal for Service in the Cause of Freedom, and the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws from the University of Edinburgh in your native Scotland. As Vice President and Chief Actuary of the New York Life Insurance Company, you were at the time of your retirement after 42 years of service to the company, Dean of American Actuaries and the widely quoted author of more than 100 outstanding articles on medical actuarial topics. Born in Edinburgh and graduated from George Watson's College there, you came to the United States in 1892 to join the Fidelity Mutual Life Insurance Company. Moving in 1899 to the New York Life, you soon became its chief actuary and later vice president and member of the executive committee. You have served your adopted country and your native one by your interest in the progress in the program of the English Speaking Union which brings a student from George Watson's College to this country each year. The fourth student to come to Hamilton is in the audience today. It was me. <laughs> His predecessors achieved outstanding records here. Hamilton applauds your extraordinary service to your profession and to international understanding and would today add her recognition to these honours you have already received and so richly merited. Oh. Mm. That's quite a moving That uh, is wonderful. Yeah, it is, it is. Yeah. And, oh. you know, I think it sums up him and Absolutely. he is the one we have to, to yes. really... For all of you, all these generations, the you, you here today... Yeah. 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 The other thing is I'm not absolutely clear to what extent it's his money mm -hmm. or whether the English-speaking union... Is the English-speaking union still, still involved in the administration of your... Scholarship. Not not on the side, but for those going for those across, going? yes. Oh, they certainly did give us stipend yeah. f um, dependent on people travelling at the end of yeah, their right. academic yeah. year. Because they, they kind of administer yes. various aspects yes, they of did. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Yes. yes, they did all the logistics of booking yeah. Yeah, that's right. journey home. Yeah. <laughs> Making it's sure I received a little bit of money. Yeah. And, and so this link with history, you you both met this. Oh yeah, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, he, he was born in the in the eighteen sixties. Yes. So yes. there's a there's a living link yeah. from eighteen sixty to twenty eighteen. <laughs> yeah. Really. I should also mention uh, that the Watsonian Club of North America. Mm. Uh, did an awful lot to, mm. to help us as well. Yes. But, um, yes. Obviously, Dr. Hunter was was a member of that, but mm. uh, there were others there who went out of their way to 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 ensure that they, the Thank person you. who was at Hamilton uh, had all the help that was needed. Mm. And well, I can take up on that one because I was met off the boat by the. North American Watsonian Club Secretary. Oh, good. Yes. I can still remember his name, Jacek Galaska. He was a pull of a Polish yes, yes. origin. Yeah. And he met me off the boat, made sure I got through customers and all the rest of it. And then uh, I spent the night with him and his wife in, in, their, in their apartment in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And then he got me on the train up to mm -hmm. Utica yeah. the next day. Yeah, because uh, Kate Watson has this sort of worldwide yes. network yes. 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 wherever you go. <laughs> yes. 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 There are times when it's so, it's so good. Plus, we were also expected to come down to New York for the annual meeting of the Watsonian Club in New York. The dinner. The dinner. Yes. Or the lunch. It was, oh, was it lunch? lunch. It was lunch. It was yeah. lunch. Yes. Yes. In, in one of the clubs. Yes. Um, the Atlantic Club, is it? I can't remember what it was called. I, need to, I, I could find out because it's still in the Watsonian, old Watsonian magazines that I've got. But we had to come, well I, I remember again, I came down and stayed with this secretary, Galaska, uh, and he took me along and introduced me. It, it wasn't a huge meeting, it was about 15, 20 minutes, still. maybe there. And, you know, a bit of business was done and then I was asked to stand up and say a bit about, you know, with your public speaking again? <laughs> 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 
whether it's cause and effect or just coincidence, I finished <laughs> up teaching maths for 42 years. Yeah. <laughs> so the ability to get on my hind legs and say something meaningful <laughs> was, you know, helpful. To something say meaningful, I'm not sure. Not to me it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. No. Uh, so that, so that yeah. was good too. But no, the Watsonian Club were tied into the, the arrangement quite closely. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that, that gave you a sort of feeling of hopelessness too. It, it was good to, good to meet somebody. Mm -hmm straight away with a Watsonian connection. Yeah. That, that network, I, I sometimes think, is almost too strong. <laughs> but there are times when it's just what you need. Certainly yeah. arriving for the first time in a completely alien land Absolutely. to yeah. be met by somebody who knows all about you, and etc. Yeah. That's a huge yeah. bonus. So although you were both there just for the one year, mm -hmm. you became part of the class of was it 62, 63, 62. would that be right? Yes. yes. And are you still in touch with others from that year? Do you get the Hamilton magazines and so on? Do they still ask you for money? <laughs> <laughs> the answer to these questions, sadly, is no. Oh. Uh, um, the only contact I have is through the fraternity that I joined. Right. Yeah. And I get their magazine from mm -hmm. their national office, yes. uh, which is once or twice a year, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't get anything from Hamilton College. Well, I'm, I'm even worse because I've lost contact with both of them oh. the fraternity. Oh. Simply, you know, moving house, getting married, yes, moving yes. on, things, you know, other well, priorities tend uh, to take a bit. I mean, and then, yeah. yeah. There were, uh, certainly in the, f I can't remember how many years, but for the first, say, ten years, mm. I mm. did have contact yeah. with a number yeah. of people. Likewise. Yeah. And some of them came across mm -hmm. the UK, yeah. Yeah. so I had the chance to, to, to meet up and... Um, well, we're talking uh, some of the hospitality, basically. Yeah, <laughs> quite. No, really. You, you yeah, felt that's really right. obliged to do so because of the... But it yeah. sort of, you know, just died away, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and it, it's, it's... I suppose it's regrettable in many ways mm -hmm. that I haven't been able to, mm -hmm. to, to keep up contact with, with people. I'd love to know what what happened to you know quite a lot of them. Yes. Yeah. And whether we should go back to <laughs> <laughs> homecoming or whatever. <laughs> I mean, we are thinking when we were talking the other day about yes. pla planning to go and revisit. Because yeah. yeah. it would seem and I feel it would be wrong never to return. Mm. Yeah. Homecoming is when all the classes come back. Is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Yes. I love my weekend now mostly. Yeah. Um, but it'll have a lot of sporting events and then every class here will come yes. back. Yeah. Um, and march under their own little banner, do they? I have think I seen so. A, I've seen a picture of that. I think, think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if that's every year or yeah. just on special anniversary years. Yeah. But. I mean, can I ask, when we were there, I think I'm right in saying 700 was the number I re recollect yes. seeing the undergraduates. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think it mentions what's, what's 750. Of, I think all right, what sort of numbers are there now. I think we're at 1850 now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is a doubling up by linking with the, the Kirtland Women's College, College yeah. yeah. Plus yeah. a little bit of expansion. And exactly. Kirtland College was the ladies, the yes. Women's yeah. College. Yeah. yeah. And they linked up in what, what year, Caitlin? Oh, I have no idea. I was, I was <laughs> like your, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Between your times, anyway. Yes. 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 It, it, wasn't yeah. on, it wasn't on the cards at all when we were there. Yeah. yeah. And it's fully integrated. That's now. fully integrated. Yeah. You barely notice yeah. that there were two separate colleges. Yeah. Um, it's always one. So where 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 are all the, the the extra facilities, if you like, relative to all the old buildings that we can remember? You mean from the ladies' college? Yeah. So there's the middle of the road. Yes. When you're going up the hill, I don't yeah. know if it's the same. So the left was always the the ladies' college, and then the right was men. So. Oh. Um, now that middle road, I don't know if it was... See, all I can remember is driving up from Clinton yes. village. Oh, yes. There were fraternity yeah. territories on, on the left. Yeah. On the left. On both sides. sides. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. even further um, to the left of those fraternity houses, that's where the women's college was. Right. Okay. Um, right. So now I guess where, those, where the, the Kasai house was, that's kind of the center of campus mm -hmm. now. Right. Um, and it kind of expands <laughs> from there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So obviously... Um, what Dr. Hunter set up, mm -hmm. he would have been delighted with your the the experience of of, well, of you two. Yeah, I should have been. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I mean, you so, made. Well, he he was very kind because uh, he, he he sent a letter to my parents. Yes. Um, I think this was I stayed with them when I first arrived in New York. Yes. 
and he very kindly, you know, and so, you know, we had a few days together. And then he wrote a letter to my parents, you know, saying, you know, he's arrived and, you know... Good young chap. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> but, and it was his thoughtfulness to, yes. to, to yes. do that, yes. you know. Um, I suspect my mum and father are a bit worried about <laughs> sending their son into the unknown. <laughs> but, uh, no, he was a very considerate man. Yeah. Very, there was a, there was very another quiet one. and sort of self-effacing, even. Yeah. I, I, I oh, yeah. Always felt. oh gosh, yeah. he wasn't sort of in your face or pushy or anything. Just mm -hmm. there was another Watsonian out there who uh, he wasn't involved, I don't think, in um, uh, in the financing at all. But uh, a chap called McGregor, and he was <coughs> he lived up uh, near Albany. And he invited me to stay, and he and his wife lived in a in a fairly rural community just south of um, of Albany. And he he was quite a fascinating man, mm -hmm. and he obviously took uh, a great interest in yeah. in the in the Watsonian club. Yeah. And um, as I say, I went and stayed with him, and he showed me around the area, and I particularly remember that. Uh, the home of Eleanor Roosevelt was just almost next door to him. Oh, yes. So, uh, <laughs> but he, he too, I mean, he, he wrote a letter to, to, to my parents. And uh, again, it's just so sort of thoughtfulness mm. that uh, mm. came through. And uh, yeah. it, he was just a fascinating character, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Very different from, Do uh, from Dr. Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. Hugely different. I mean, he, he you know, long since gone. Oh, yeah. Well, I, that's we've spoken for almost an hour, believe it or not, <laughs> and we could go on and on. <laughs> but um, it's wonderful to see your enthusiasm after all these years, and just to see what a great experience it was for you. Indeed, yes. Yeah. Yes. I hope that um, when we chat later on, Caitlin, mm -hmm. that I, ho I hope that this year in Watsons will have been as yes. positive yes. as for I these two it, gentlemen out be, yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Well, the other, th the other thing is, I mean, it was life-changing, definitely. You, you felt that, yes. Oh, oh, yes, absolutely. I felt really different to all my friends when I came mm -hmm. back, apart from mm -hmm. the fact they pulled my light endlessly oh, about the strange your, your accent. accent. Well, did you, yes, did you assume uh, <laughs> well, a slightly well, American well, accent well, when you were there? Well, done it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise it, yeah, but, yes, but you did. I'm sure that I had it. But we were, we were <laughs> soon told that you could yeah. put away that fancy accent. <laughs> <laughs> Park your horse around the back of the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but no, but the other thing is that the sort of memories that I've got, certainly, I, I can almost remember what I did every day I was yeah. there. I mean, that's a, got to be an exaggeration, but it feels like that. It's so it's, imprinted yes. in the memory. Since we invited you in for this interview, you've been thinking about it a lot well, and then yeah, chatting well, sure. together and yeah, sure. stuff that you thought you'd forgotten has come to the well, surface. That's right. yeah. Well, I was fortunate, as I think I referred to, yeah, the letters. letters. You st and you I still get every week. Like, oh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> because well, I, I had no contact uh, mm -hmm. with home mm -hmm. uh, while I was out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. No direct contact, yeah. except by letter. Yeah. And, uh, even Kate, it was really difficult even to telephone. I mean, sure. yeah. phoning was a massive thing. Yeah. Well, so just to put that in context, I, I was so carried away with myself when I got there, I kind of forgot about getting <laughs> back in touch with my <laughs> naughty boy. <laughs> and I got, a, I got a, a message from my brother, I forget how it got there, <laughs> saying, you know, you better get in touch with him. The man's gone out of his mind about here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I said, well, that's funny, because I sent a letter, but I, I'd sent it normal mail. Oh, yes. Oh, you know, yes, I just yes. didn't appreciate that it would take mm. forever. Yeah. So yeah. from that point, I discovered the aerogram yes. and started to send one on a semi-regular yes. basis. Yes. But unlike Mike, who seems to be in a happy position of being able to find all these letters from America, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very very say, yeah. I, mine have, have, have died a death. Yeah. I have no idea where they are. But, as I say, I've got, and the other thing is, in this day and age where everybody's got a smartphone with a camera on it and all the mm. rest of it, mm. I didn't have a camera. Mm. I've got, I've got the, the yearbook with lots mm. of pictures of the people yes, I knew yes, and yes, others, yes. which may be of interest as well, but maybe yes, not for yes. this. 
but they might be of interest to you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I've got lots of pictorial memories, and I, I picked up lots of postcards of places that I went to. But I, I, you know, in, in those days, everybody did not have a camera in their no. pocket all the time, and I didn't have a camera at all. No. In my family, my big sister had the had the Brownie camera. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, and the, the box camera. The box camera, camera yeah. And you just took a few photos every year for the big family occasions, yeah. or sometimes when you went to the beach for a picnic. Yeah. But not not the sort of constant. constant. You can't realise that. It's a different world. No. <laughs> so you, so I was even more cut off from my family. Than, but yeah. by that stage, I wasn't bothered. I mean, I, I was so having a good time. Yes. It was thoughtless, obviously. Yeah. But <laughs> once I'd once I'd calmed them down back home. Everything was fine, mm. uh, and you know, it, it, it was just so good. Yeah. You know, home, homesick just wasn't there at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Homesick, no time, homesick was so no good. time to be home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a wonderful experience for you both. Absolutely, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. totally, absolutely. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. No, that's that's